I once uh, knew someone who said that he didn't believe in the pursuit of happiness. And I thought, wow, how unfortunate. I am so excited to be sitting down with you. I'm Aisha Jaffer. I am a weekday host here on The Current, and I'm hanging out with Jenny Lewis. Thanks for being with me. Hello, Aisha. <laughs> so today is an exciting day. You announced a new album, the first one since 2019, since On the Line. It's called, is it pronounced Joy Y'all? Joy Y'all, you got it. So I'm taking that title and I'm feeling like, you know, it's either something about choosing a path of joy or a guide to choosing joy or maybe a combination or something completely different. But you tell me, what is the theme if there is a theme to this new record? Well, you nailed it right there. And, you know, I think in in choosing that path, you kind of accept all of the things that come along with it. But I, I once knew someone who said that he didn't believe in the pursuit of happiness and I thought, wow, how unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you say to that? <laughs> You're like, uh, bye. <laughs> See ya. Um, sorry for your life. Um, <laughs> well, I take, so we take that title. And then you also drop the single. In contrast, it's called Psychos. To me, it feels like a perfect road trip song. But can you tell me a bit about this piece and, and why you chose it to be the first introduction to this album? Well, it's a bit of an existential uh, take on dating in the modern age. So on the surface, it's kind of about this character, but really it's about me. And I'm, you know, questioning, am I a psycho throughout the song? And then at the end, it's, you know, how bad do you really want it? You know, is it the ego? Is it the it? So a lot of the songs on the record are kind of on the surface about relationships with other people, but really they're about relationship the relationship with yourself the relationship with your higher power so they kind of uh have uh triple meanings yeah wow okay i like that i feel like that's relatable to so many people especially on their journey in that world so that's really fascinating uh well okay so this i think is so interesting you did this virtual workshop for a week with beck and I'm just curious, it, you said it was a whole bunch of different musicians together. How did that kind of come together? Well, Beck has always been one to bring artists together to either, uh, you know, cover uh, records. He did the um, record club for years where he'd get, a, you know, a group of people together and they'd cover like a Skip Spence record. Uh, so he's always just creating an environment for people to be creative. And he had asked me to participate in one a year previous and I kind of chickened out, but this came at the, the perfect time. Uh, I was in Nashville and there were about, I don't know if it's like Fight Club where you're not supposed to talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Number one rule <laughs> of Fight Club is you don't talk about it, but amazing artists. And then every day for a week, he would give an assignment and everyone would write and record and then send the song to Beck and he would um, compile the songs on a SoundCloud playlist. So the first day of the week was a free form writing assignment. And I wrote puppy in a truck and sent it to the group. I mean, I, I love that. And I want to come back to that song. Cause I have some questions. It is my favorite song that you've ever written. Uh, you've written a plethora of songs, but that one feels, well, I'm going to just ask about it now. It just feels vulnerable. It feels, uh, it feels like a, a new step. And uh, I just, I mean, I have to ask you, I need to know the story about Bobby Rhubarb. Bobby Rhubarb is the joy of my life. And she was a gift from my friend, uh, Serengeti. He's an amazing poet and rapper from Chicago. And we became friends. We met at this uh, festival that um, Justin Vernon and the Desners through in Berlin in 2018, which I often refer to as the last great time we all had. It was like this artist free for all. We lived in a hotel in Berlin oh. and collaborated on these short sets together and lived and played and hung for a week. And I became friends with Dave Serengeti in the lunch hall. Uh, and we just kind of sat next to each other, kind of freaks and geeks style. 
nice. and became really good friends. And then we made some music during the pandemic. Um, we sent some music back and forth and released a couple of songs. And then early 2021, I was really down like so many people. And he said, Jay, do you want a dog? I was like, what? He's like, I'll bring you a dog. If you want a dog, just give me, tell me, give me the word. And uh, so he, I say, give me 48 hours to think about it. And then he drove Bobby Rhubarb down from Chicago to Nashville and showed up at my doorstep with her in his hands. She was eight weeks old. And then the rest is history. Oh, my goodness. So Bobby Rhubarb was already a traveler at the very beginning of all of this. And then you took Bobby Rhubarb on tour. I took Bobby on the uh, love on tour with Harry Styles for almost three, three months. She was seven months old. Oh my gosh. So she's, she's a traveler. She's a legend already. Uh, and well, and then was that what inspired Harry Styles to essentially, I don't know if Harry is playing a different dog or is Harry playing Bobby? Cause he looks different than Bobby Rhubarb in your video. Well, Harry definitely has met Bobby Rhubarb and uh, <laughs> they, they know each other. And at the end of the tour, um, he gave me a lovely uh, gift bag of mostly dog treats, <laughs> which was Amazing. very cute as a thank you. Uh, and yeah, the, I mean, that that was just kind of a fun thing we made on the road. My tour manager had a drone that he bought for the tour. So we would drone on our days off. And then he would set his iPhone up on the edge of the stage for those amazing shows. And uh, yeah, Harry was just so cool to like be a part of the gag. That's that's incredible. I love that. Also, well, I may or may not be a furry. <laughs> <laughs> Your life has changed since Bobby entered the picture, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, no judgment. Whatever you're into, that's that's all good. <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah, it's all about choosing joy, right? So, well, I want to get back to that. I want to get back to talking about this this amazing Fight Club workshop, if you will, <laughs> because I have heard in the past that you're, the way that you kind of do songwriting is it kind of comes through you. It's almost like a magical channeling experience, right? So having this workshop where there are prompts uh, mixed with kind of knowing that about you, how did those two methods go hand in hand? Well, I, I like uh, parameters uh, with art. Like, I, I think it's really helpful, you know, like four tracking is amazing because you only have four tracks. So you can't, you know, all the permutations of modern record making like Pro Tools, sometimes it can, can kind of complicate the matter. So the parameters and the prompts kind of allowed me to be free within the very basic, you know, guidelines like you know write a song with like one four five as the changes so having the structure and then being able to let the you know the poetry kind of flow through the structure was very helpful and i had a bunch of songs that i had been working out on the road so i kind of put those aside and then this new batch and then i got to go back to those old songs and kind of reimagine them i yeah that's awesome some sometimes structure like that is uh, it can change the game too, which is exciting. Well, in this in this process too, I'm wondering, did you like in doing this kind of camp, if you will, did you take anything away from it that you hadn't used in your songwriting process that you're now going to keep for the future? Well, I I think having been alone for the pandemic, I mean, I did all of that alone before I I got Bobby Rhubarb. It it reinforced the need for community and my peers are such an important part of that process so being able to participate you know with like adam green was a part of it and soko and i brought in cast mccombs and being able to learn from their process like some people would submit you know a fully produced song in 24 hours some people it was just a you know an electronic piece uh so kind of trusting whatever wherever you're at in the moment and having the courage to present that to the group you know it's intimidating if you know you're like oh my god these people are listening to my music but but uh yeah just the openness openness to like share what you got 
Then can I ask, you know, on that topic of, of having your peers around, so you talked about this hotel in Berlin, does that still exist? Is that a place you can still go to? Oh yeah, the Mi- Mi- Michelberger. <laughs> <laughs> What a what a beautiful space that you're kind of surrounded by these amazing peers and and people people who will drive you know so many hours to bring you Bobby and and like the inspiration around you is pretty magical, which I think for this record it feels like all the stars aligned really right because you met your producer Dave Cobb and then he brought on he has this incredible house band you got Jess Wolf back on the record Greg Kohler was brought in as an engineer and John Bryant too who all contributed, but my my favorite thing about this like magic galaxy story is what I, I i feel like just everything you've just created this galaxy record i haven't even heard and i'm already calling it it's probably amazing uh but my favorite part of the story is that you went to black shag vintage and f- you, you had the idea of skeeter davis in mind in this record and you found her exact outfit and uh, are wearing it on the cover and i'm just wondering when you found this it just feels like another dot connected but also, how did you know? How did you know that that was Skeeter Davis's outfit? Did they tell you, or how did that kind of come together? Well, it was on the tag. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> very straightforward. <laughs> but I think with these things, I, you know, and I don't want to get too new agey about it. But when you're present in the moment, and you kind of practice, you know, this presence of mind and manifestation, the things things just line up and if you're open to the signs it, it you'll be guided in the right direction and that doesn't mean that there isn't you know pain and suffering along with the joy but i felt very open in that moment and i kind of just followed you know i just followed the muse and it led me to skeeter's amazing uh silver and green sparkly outfit Beautiful and perfect and a, and a great reminder, honestly, because we do kind of get lost. It's it's being open and manifesting is, I mean, I believe in that as well. Uh, well, I mean, with, just on the, on the point of Skeeter Davis, what is, I mean, where are we going to hear the influence or what is the type of influence that Skeeter Davis has on this record? Well, her um, directly, the cover is a is a reference to one of her records, and and really just for me, finding the autonomy in my songwriting, where I've always been a songwriter, writing on my own since I was ten, but I've been lucky to have these uh, collaborative relationships as well, like in Rilo Kylie, uh, Blake and I wrote together. I also wrote on my own. My partner, Jonathan Rice, for many years, we would write together. But I think I've just been seeking total autonomy in my storytelling. And so this record, yeah, I wrote on my own. And it feels like Puppy in a Truck, very almost conversational. I feel like I've really just gotten to this place where I feel comfortable just telling my story how I want to tell it. Yeah. And I feel like, at least from the listener's side, we feel part of the conversation. We're like interacting with it that way. Psychos is definitely a relatable track. And Puppy in a Truck, like I said, uh, affected me in a big way. Even just hearing Bobby's voice at the end, you know, there there's some there's some beauty. I feel like I'm on that journey with you. And I, I really love it. So thank you Thanks. for bringing this incredible music to us. Um, well, we're excited. You're you're coming on tour up here in Duluth with Trampled by Turtles. We're really excited to have you at Bayfront Festival Park. Um, I have heard some interviews in the past where you mentioned Duluth, and I'm wondering, do you have a connection to Duluth in some way? Well, I have a deep Minnesota connection. My uh, brothers live, my half brothers uh, live in Hastings and Menominee, Wisconsin. And uh, my father, when he got sick and before he passed my half brother took him in and so the most time i've ever spent with my dad was you know while he was living in hastings and then in the hospital in st paul so i've always had uh just deep connections to minnesota and i have a lot of friends in wisconsin and the cities and it's really one of my favorite places and tbt I love those dudes. And I was supposed to play uh, last year 
But yeah. my god, my godfather passed away. Oh, and I'm so, so sorry. I, so I had to cancel the show, but I'm so looking forward to coming back and uh, being back in Duluth. Oh, well, we're so excited to have you and, and, and really sorry for your loss. That's hard um, and important when those days. Well, here, here's something kind of funny that I wanted to bring up is in at The Current, we do this thing called March Music Madness, where we do the brackets and we choose a year and we have all of our listeners vote for the favorite record of that year. And 2003 was that year. And the Postal Service's Give Up was number one. So we're not just going to see you in Duluth. I hear we're also going to see you for this huge anniversary playing that album from top to bottom in the fall. I mean, what does that feel like to go back 20 years? I mean, you're not on the tour yet, but like just to think about that. It's crazy that so many of the records that I've been a part of are now turning 20. <laughs> I mean, it's bananas, uh, but it, it's going to be great. I, you know, I, I love singing those songs. We did uh, the 10 year anniversary 10 years ago, and that was just overwhelming and incredible and but it's all sort of linked because uh death cab they're they're gonna play transatlanticism mm -hmm. and then we're gonna do give up and rilo kylie we had just put out the execution of all things when i went on the initial tour with the postal service for give up in 2003 and and my band rilo kylie we were on Bar Souk Records, because I was such a huge uh, Death Cab fan. I sent our demo to the label because I, I was a Death Cab fan. So it's all part of this one thing, you know, this community of people we've been playing and touring together for 20 plus years. I mean, that's the heart of what we've been talking about in this conversation. It seems like it is that community, right? And that's, it's so beautiful to have that. And it just brings, uh, it just brings and fosters more creativity and it all comes up together. So, well, in saying that, I mean, are you going to do, are you talking about a reunion at all with Rilo Kylie? You know, we haven't talked about it, but I, you know, I'm open to whatever happens. I think it would be unfair to not play those songs together again just for us because we they're so those songs are so important to us we just have to find the right moment to you know bring it up you know when you're in a band it's like family so it's like you got to work stuff out so you can have like a peaceful you know time together so we're, we're, we're sorting it yeah everybody come to the table have a meal have a conversation Absolutely. Well, we're so excited to have you. I'm so excited about this new album. Is there anything else uh, you want to share before I let you go? No, I mean, I, just, I love the current and I'm not just saying that. It's just I and I love the cities and I can't wait to come back and see all my friends. Oh, my goodness. We can't wait to have you. I'm so excited. Thanks so much, Jenny Lowe's, for hanging out with me today. Thank you. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.